My name is Jeff Varisano, and I'm the owner-operator of Varisano's Pizzeria in Atlanta, Georgia. But before I owned pizzerias, in my previous life, 1981, I was the world record holder for the Rubik's Cube. So I was kind of the first world record holder. I held it the entire year that it was the hot puzzle, and I did all the talk shows. It was on Merv Griffin, and that's incredible, John Davidson, Good Morning America. So I did a lot with the Cube. I wrote a book on how to solve it called Jeff Conquers the Cube. And a lot of times kids come into the restaurant and I do a couple of tricks with them that I've always wanted to film, so we're gonna get started. I'm gonna do it real quick. So first thing is just make sure these cubes are good and scrambled. This is uh, my assistant, the lovely Ashley here. Hello. <laughs> so just make sure, just give them a good scramble, make sure they're good. They're already pretty scrambled up, but she's, uh, and you, you, know, you know a little about the cube, right? So you're, you, you average like a minute or something, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so now of course the kids these days, I know the kids are doing it in eight seconds. Um, my peak average was about 21 seconds, but I'm kind of clanky old Rubik's Cubes. So with cubes this good, probably could average 18 or something with my solution, but my solution is a little antiquated. I know everyone's doing some of these newer solutions, but back in the day, we just had to develop our own solutions. We didn't have the internet to, to trade all these ideas and everything. So we only actually only had about seven months from the time we thought we'd have to, might, um, just from the time the cube got popular until there was a national competition. So it was all really, really quick and we just developed our own things. Okay, so step one here is I'm just gonna put a cube together, okay? So I'm just taking a quick look at it and I'm just gonna get started. Now I do a method here where I do all of the corners first. Okay, that was actually pretty fast. I got a little lucky at the end, but it was a legit solve. There we go. Okay, so um, that's how I put a cube together. Now I'm going to do an even better trick, so go ahead and scramble that one. I'm not looking. <laughs> okay, now I love to do this with kids in the restaurant. Okay, so this is a scramble, right? You like the scramble? It's your favorite yeah. scramble of all yes, time? It's awesome. Okay. <laughs> so since this is her favorite of all time, I'm trying to impress the ladies here. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make another one just like yours. So you can have two of your favorite here, okay? So I'm going to take this cube and I'm going to match it uh, exactly to, um, to this cube right here, okay? So let's see, red, white, and blue there. And I'm just going to go sort of methodically through all the pieces. And of course I have my little, my little tricks that I do. This obviously takes a few more minutes than just putting a cube together does. Um, let's see, where's that one there? Okay, got my first side. Let's see. Yellow is going there. Green and white is going there. Alrighty, let's see how we did here. These match, yes, and those, and those, and those, and that one, and that one. Make sense? Yes? Sweet. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you a couple things about how I developed my original solution, um, and I'm also gonna debunk the cube. So actually the first thing I'm gonna do is sort of debunk the cube, because everyone comes up to me uh, all the time, and they're asking for sort of what, what's the trick, what's the secret? So, um, of course, there's no secret, there's a method to doing it. Most of the methods, if you, uh, you know, if you go online and learn a lot of these methods, especially the methods that are, you know, that go really fast, which is the ones you probably want to learn, it, the, the problem with them, though, is, is that even, even though you know the solution, even though you can work and, 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 you know, they give you a set of patterns that you have to recognize, and then um, you know some solutions to those patterns. It's hard to really understand the cube from those methods. It's hard to look at the cube and say, gee, I understand why that uh, particular move works. Rather, it's just sort of a setup. You see a pattern, you do a move, 
things come into place, but you almost have to follow step by step. In other words, those solutions are not logical in the sense that most people can't really just look at them and fully understand them. So I'm going to explain a system that I think is the most logical system, um, and uh, let's just walk through it, okay? So let's just walk through it, okay? So let's focus in on this cube a second. A couple of basics. First basic is um, the problem with the puzzle is not moving things around. The problem with the puzzle is that um, all the pieces are totally interconnected. So one of the most common things that people say to me when, um, when, when I show them I'm doing the cube is they almost, I would say 80% of people say the exact same comment to me, which is, oh, I used to be able to do the cube too, only I used to peel off all the stickers and put them back. Ha, ha, ha. Never heard that before. Okay, but <laughs> uh, y'all have all heard this before. Okay, right. But which is sort of silly because it actually takes a long time to peel off all the stickers and they never really quite go back on right. Um, but everyone tells me that. What they're really saying instinctively is that it's not hard to move the pieces. It's that the pieces are interconnected. If they could find a method to move them separately, which is what you get when you peel the stickers off, you could now move the stickers independently, then you could solve the puzzle. So, for example, let's just take, so this is red, white, and blue, right? Let's just take this red piece, and you don't have to follow what I'm doing right now. I'm just moving the red piece off. Now, if I want to move this red piece here, back up to here to match the other red, well, the most obvious thing is just to move it so that it's now into the correct position. Of course, the problem is, is that by moving this piece, I've lost into place. I've moved these other two out of place. And that's the problem with the puzzle. The problem is the interconnectedness. People get sort of hung up on the number of permutations. Oh my God, there's like, you know, 4.23 times 10 to the 19 permutations. And that sounds really, really scary, but it's not if you think about it. So let me give you an example. Let's say I had a deck of cards uh, with just the letters A through Z, just 26 cards. Could you put that in order? Now that has just as many, probably more combinations than there are combinations in the Rubik's Cube. Um, in fact, it's, it's orders of magnitude more. Um, but you, you think you could do it, right? How would you do it? You'd start with the letters scrambled, so you'd flip through and you'd find the A. Let's say the A was at position 12, right? And now you'd move it to position 1. Okay, great. Next, you'd find the B. The B is at position, I don't know, 21. Now you're going to move it to position 2, right? And you just proceed down, the, down, down you know, one letter at a time. But what if it wasn't that easy? What if you couldn't move the pieces independently? What if you got the A into position 1, and now you find the B at position 21, you want to move it to position 2. Well, what if the only move you knew to move the piece from position 21 into position 2 also took that A that's at position 1 and popped it out to position 7? Now you have a puzzle. See, you're not doing just one at a time, you're doing many at a time. And that's really the problem with the, with, with the cube. So, for example, let's take the corners, okay? There's eight corners. If I do one turn of the puzzle, which is the minimum thing that you can do, is just turn one, one piece. If I turn one piece, I've moved four of the eight corners. So I have to move half of the corners just to do anything. And moving one slice gets real boring real fast. It cannot really accomplish much just by doing that. So in order to do any sort of transformation of these corners, I have to move at least one piece and one other. And that means I've now incorporated two more. So I have to move six minimum, six out of the eight puzzle corners in order to do anything. And that's what makes the puzzle so complicated is that all the pieces are all in motion at the same time and they're all totally interconnected, okay? So what I wanna do is I wanna show you a method, a way to get out of that. I wanna show you a solution where you really can move the pieces independently. Okay, next, um, I want to cover this issue. Oh, by the way, this is Ziggy. He's uh, my little assistant. Okay, excuse me. Okay, so um, let's cover some basics. Okay, first basic I want to cover is that most people are trying to get a side. They're obsessed with, oh, I want to solve the red side or I want to solve the blue side. But anyone who's done the puzzle for any length of time realizes that getting the sides, it's sort of a... It's sort of a fool's gold. It doesn't really get you anywhere because you're not really dealing in sides. You're really dealing in pieces. And there's three kinds of pieces on the cube, okay? There are center pieces, which have just one color. There are edge pieces, which have two. And there are corner pieces that have three. Throughout this demonstration, I'm going to focus on the red, white, and blue corner because that's the colors that I just sort of roll off the tongue. Red, white, and blue are just easiest to see and to remember. So we're going to constantly focus on red, white, and blue. So the centers have one color, the edges have two, and the corners have three. The centers never move. They look like they move, but it's sort of an optical illusion. Here, let me show you. Okay, 
So you would say, okay, I can move the centers because I can do something like this, right? And it looked like I moved the center so that actually instead of being red, white, and blue now, it's, it's, you know, it's red, yellow, and blue. So I moved that white center down to the bottom. But actually, I don't want you to think of it that way. Think of it this way, okay? So here's my centers, red, white, and blue, right? If I turn this side, have the, edges, have the centers changed at all? No, right? The centers are still red, white, and blue. Now if I turn the opposite side, have the centers moved or are they still red, white, and blue? They're still red, white, and blue, right? So actually, if you think about it, I've achieved the same look that you just saw a minute ago without moving the centers. Now your eye wants to say, your eye wants to go with the majority. So your eye wants to say, well, really I started with these red and I moved these other red out of there. But that's not what you did. You actually started with all the red at the top and then by moving these out of the way, you ended up looking like you slid this stripe out, but actually you did e move everything but those, right? And I can actually sort of continue that logic. So you can see my corners are still red, white, and blue. My corners are still red, white, and blue. See, they, they haven't moved at all. Everything moved except the center. So it looks like, oh, I moved the centers around. Total optical illusion, okay? What that means is that if I take a scrambled cube like this one, and let's move the centers red, white, and blue again. Well, then that means what piece goes here? Right, what piece is going to go between the red and the white centers? Well, the red and white edge, right? And over here between the red and blue, I have to find the red and blue piece and I have to move it here. And I have to find the red, white, and blue corner and move it here, right? So I'm essentially moving all the pieces towards their centers and I'm never moving the centers. Does that make sense? That's sort of one little thing that you just have to know. Now, there's only two kinds of pieces then that are movable. Since the centers don't move, the only pieces that are movable are edges and corners. And um, um, moving the edges and corners is actually not very difficult. The problem, like I said, is trying to move one without moving the ones you've already solved, right? So let's say, for example, I have red, white, and blue here. So I find the red and blue edge, which happens to be down here, and then I move it into position. Boom. See how this is all done now? Great. Now I'm going to move... Um, now I'm going to move this red, white, and blue, I'm going to move this red, white, and blue corner into position. See, that's solved. But now, and this white one actually just luckily came into place, this red and blue, white and blue one came into place. But now I want to get the red and white one into position. And now it's going to start to get a little more difficult. See, this red and white one is here. The red and white one is going to go here. But there's no easy, quick way to move that into position without also moving something else that I didn't want to move. And that's the problem with the puzzle. So that's what we're going to get out of. We're going to, I'm going to show you a way out of that. So if you think about it, if there's two types of pieces, okay, um, there's the, each, of the, each type of piece, the edges and the corners, have really just two characteristics, okay? They have where are they, so I have to be able to control where are the edges and where are the corners. And once they're in position, I might have to twist them or orient them in some way. So there's two types of pieces, edges and corners, and they have two characteristics, their position and their orientation. If I could develop four moves that could do all four of those problems, that could solve, solve, you know, move an edge, move a corner, flip an edge, flip a corner. If I could have four moves, those four moves, and they could op operate independently, in other words, I could just swap two corners, for example, or swap two edges without scrambling anything in between them. Then I could use that move to solve the entire puzzle. I hope that sort of makes sense. I'm gonna, you're going to see it as I'm going along. Now, so what we're going to do is I'm going to walk you through all four moves. But actually, it's even easier than that because it's really one move with four tiny little variations on it. And I'm not going to scramble. I'm not going to show you all the pieces. We're going to focus on just mastering this one edge and this one corner. And if we can master moving and flipping this edge, moving and flipping this corner, then actually we've mastered the entire puzzle. And we're gonna do all four of those moves with just one single idea, okay? And unlike the other solutions that you've seen, that idea is actually something that makes some logical sense. And I'm, I'm hoping at some point you're gonna look at it and go, ah, okay, that makes sense. That would have to work, okay? Let's, let's proceed, okay? What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move and flip this edge, move and flip this corner. And I'm gonna start with the easiest of these moves to see. Okay. Now this actually would be something you would do closer to the end, but visually it's easier to see and teach if I show you this one first. So that's what I'm going to do. All right, let's look at where, where we are right now. 
you can see that most of the puzzle is completely solved. So everything down here, this is all solved and perfect, okay? My only problem is that this piece, this red and white piece, it's actually in the right position. So you have the red and white piece that's between the red and white centers, but it's just turned around backwards, okay? And the same is true with this red and yellow piece. So both of these pieces need to be flipped. They need to be turned around, okay? But how can I do that without scrambling the rest of the puzzle. That's the trick I want to show you, okay? So let's get started. So let I'm going to show you the move. Now this move is the base move for all the moves I'm going to show you. All four variations are going to be based on the same single concept. So here, here it is. I want to take the piece that's bugging me, which is either this piece or this piece. And it doesn't matter whether it's bothering me because it's in the wrong position or it's bothering me because it's flipped the wrong way. It doesn't matter. I'm just mastering these two. I'm going to take these two, either of these two, the one that's bothering me, I'm going to move it towards you, and I'm going to take the piece that's bugging me, in this case it's the edge, and I'm going to move it off to the side. If the corner was the one that was bothering me, I'd move the corner off to the side, but instead I'm just going to move this one off to the side, and then I'm going to move this back, okay? Actually, let me just back up and do that one more time. I want you just to focus on the red. I just want you to see how I'm going to line this red up with these red. Okay, so just follow the red and constantly look at how is this red going to line up with these red. I'm going to move these towards you. Now these red, they're moved out of position, but they're not really going anywhere because they're going to come right back. I'm just moving them towards you just so I can release this other piece, this other red. And then these are going right back. Okay, so what I've effectively done is I've moved the piece that was here and I've moved it here and then here. So I've moved it from here to here. Make sense? Great. Now, how can I take this red and I want to line it up with the other red. So that's the very first thing I want to figure out how to do. How do I take this red and line it up with the other red? Here's how I do it. I'm going to move these red to the back by going over the top. And now these two red are facing me. They're facing me. This red is in the front. If I flip it around twice through the center, then that will also be in the back facing me. Does that make sense? So they'll all line up together in the back. What does he think? <laughs> Come here, buddy. He wishes this cube was made out of fish. That's what he wishes. <laughs> okay, let's do it again. Let's do it again really slowly. I'm starting over, so the bottom is perfect. I'm going to take this piece out by moving it towards you and then moving it off to the side. I take these red and put them back, and now I continue on and move them, these red to the back. And they come to the back by going over the top. This comes to the back by going through the center. And voila, all the red are facing me. And I simply move them back towards you and they're all there. Okay? That's the first part of the move. Okay, now, that solved my initial problem, which is the, my red lineup with, and my white lineup, which is perfect. Sweet. Okay. But now I have a problem. See, remember all of this was perfect? Remember all of this stuff here on the bottom was 100% was, was perfect. Now... Mm, it's pretty much completely scrambled, right? So how, the question then is, how can I solve everything on the bottom, okay? So you've been watching me for a little bit, right? You've been paying attention? You've yeah. really paying attention? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. So you saw me flip this piece around, right? And before I started flipping this piece around, the bottom was perfect, right? And mm -hmm. now the bottom is completely scrambled. So that's like that, right? So we did one thing that's good, we flipped the corner, the edge, that's good. We scrambled the bottom, that's bad. Mm -hmm. How do we fix the bottom? I don't know. I'm going to give you a hint. <laughs> that's <laughs> okay? a good question. <laughs> First of all, I'm telling you in advance, it's a trick question. Okay, so I'm looking for a one-word answer. A lot of people are like, well, you turn the top and around. No, no, no. I'm looking for a one-word answer. How, how do I fix the bottom? Okay, here's the other hint. Here's the hint. It was just solved a minute ago, right? So it seems completely scrambled, and it seems like very far. There's like there wouldn't be some simple trick to fixing it. But actually, it's not that far from being solved because you just saw it solved a second ago, right? Here, so watch. Actually, let me start over again. I'm going to go back, and I'm going to start over again. So I'm going to just reverse what I did. I'm going to move this to the back, okay? I'm going to move it back out to the front. This is just the reverse of what I did, okay? Now I'm going to move this to the front, and this slides in and then back up. So that's just the reverse of what I just did, right? Oh, look, I fixed it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, okay, did y'all catch that? I was sort of being a little cagey there, but actually I just did exactly what I said 
had to be done, which is I fixed the bottom, right? Mm -hmm. And how did I fix the bottom? I fixed the bottom by reversing everything I just did. It was just perfect a minute ago. Then I do a bunch of moves and now it's not perfect anymore. So if I want to fix it, I just go backwards, right? So w let's be very specific though. When I went backwards, something good happened. What good happened? The bottom mm -hmm. got fixed, right? Yeah. But something bad happened. What, what bad happened? Okay, right. So actually, <laughs> so it seems pointless, right? At first glance, it seems completely pointless because, because um, um, you know, we didn't want to flip this piece, right? Now, but let's be very precise. Let's be very precise. So that move going forward flipped the red and white piece, mm -hmm. right? And scrambled the bottom, okay? But actually, that's not the only way of looking at that. It didn't flip the red and white piece. It flipped whatever piece happened to be sitting on the upper right-hand side, as seen from the camera. Okay, mm. so that just happened to be red and white in this case. It doesn't have to always be red and white, but in this case it happened to be red and white. So let's yeah. do the move again and we're going to see where that leads us. Okay, so we're going to take the piece that's bothering us, move it towards you. We move it off to the side. This is the same thing. And then we're going to move it to the top. Now move it to the back. This comes through the center to line up with the other ones. And then voila, it's back up there. Okay, now we know we're going to perform all those moves in reverse. But if we, rever we reverse ourselves, then this piece that's sitting in the upper right hand corner is going to flip and we don't want to flip this one but actually we could flip any of these four that we wanted to right we don't want to flip this one but we do want to flip this mm. one huh makes sense oh, see, yeah. see there's like an aha moment there right now if i reverse myself the bottom is going to be fixed right mm -hmm. and this piece is going to flip instead of that one right mm. and now we so i'm going to move it to the back this is just the reverse of what i did before and voila now the bottom yeah. is totally fixed. Now I just take this one that I had moved into position and I move it back over there and it's done. Okay? Nice. Does that make sense? So essentially I transferred the flip from one to the other. That move that I did to flip the piece around, if that move were 50 moves long, it wouldn't matter because I'm going to undo the whole thing anyway. It doesn't matter how much damage I create. As long as I'm not damaging anything on this side, notice that that move had a, a very specific characteristic. And that is that it only affected one piece on this top side. That means that at some point, I can switch it with a different piece and then reverse myself. So I'm allowed to scramble two-thirds of the puzzle, everything from here down, but I'm not allowed to scramble anything other than have one minor effect on one piece on this side. That's what makes the move totally reversible. Does that make sense? Okay. Now, okay. makes sense, right? Now, if instead of flipping, let's do a slightly different move. Okay. This is very similar to the other one. See, the red and white one needs to flip again. But instead of flipping this one, I now need to flip this one, uh -huh. right? But does that really make any difference? No. Nah, doesn't really make a difference because I can do any of these two four. So let's do the move again, okay? So in other words, I'm gonna do the move, then I'm gonna put this one into that position, and then I'm gonna undo the move, and then I'm gonna move that one back. And it's gonna be just the same as if I did these two. See, now I'm actually starting to get some control. I'm not just have a move that flips two pieces. I have a move that flips any two pieces that I want to flip. Okay, so let's go ahead and do it. Move it towards you, move it off to the side, around to the back. Okay, and it flipped that one. Then I put this other one into position. Now I reverse myself. Okay, and now I undo that. Now what if the two that I want to flip are not even on the same side? Like what if I want to flip these two? Or what if I want to flip these two? It's no problem. So let's say I want to flip these two. No problem. Now they're on the same side. Right? And, I, and, and so I do that whole move, flip this one, put the other one into position, unflip, move that one back, and then I undo that also. So in other words, I can undo the setups to it as well. Does that make sense? So let's say, for example, we're going to flip these two, okay? So to flip these two, I'm just going to put it up like that. And now we already know exactly what we're going to do. Towards you, round, round to the back, same move again, okay? Now I take this one and move it to that position, reverse the move, okay? Then I reverse this part, and then I reverse that initial setup, and now I flip those two. Essentially, I can flip any pair that I want. Now I have full control to flip any two that I want. Now what would happen if I wanted to flip just one piece? Oh. Well, that never happens. So you don't have to worry about that. The cube itself has certain <laughs> symmetries to it, so that move works on pairs, and it's all you'll ever need. There's no way to flip one piece. But can you see what I did there? I had a move going forward, and of course, since I'm going to reverse it, of course it has to work. A lot of these moves you're doing, you're like, well, I don't know, I did a bunch of moves and everything showed up where it was supposed to, but you're not really sure why the move works. This is much more logical than that, right? You're doing something forward, you're doing it on one piece, you might get a lot of damage, but since you're going to reverse it, you're cool, okay? Now, let's, let's go to the next move, okay? I'm going to set us up here. Okay. Now, let's look at the setup. 
Instead of flipping the edges, I'm going to flip the corners. Okay. So in other words, literally, instead of having reds that were here that have to flip up, I have reds that are on the corners and have to flip up. So all I'm doing is I've moved the pieces from here to here. That's it. I was starting with these two were red last time. Now these two corners are red instead. But other than that, the move is the same. Now, watch this a second. This move piece has to move which way? Clockwise or counterclockwise? That piece? Yeah. Mm, counter. Counterclockwise. And the other one? Clockwise. See? They pair off. They're opposite, right? Mm -hmm. One's going to go clockwise, then I'm going to reverse move, and one's going to go counterclockwise. Make sense? Sweet. Let's do it. Okay? So let's do it right here. So we're going to follow this red. So we're going to do the exact same move. So we're going to move the offending piece towards us. And now that it's the corner piece, we're going to move this bottom out of, out of the way. So same exact move, except instead of worrying about the edge, I'm going to worry about the corner. Okay? Move it off to the side. And then, just like I did before, these move back. So you see how the move is like, it's almost like pushing itself forward. Like there's very few options, really, with this move. There's a lot of options, a lot of variations we can do later that we might show. But the move itself is almost done. <laughs> like I've already, already, it's already locked and loaded. All I have to do now is find some way to get this red up here. Mm -hmm. And then... I'm going to move this other piece into position, reverse whatever that whole thing is, and then push this back and it's done. So just like three moves in, it already has to work. Does that make sense? As mm -hmm. opposed to some of these other moves. So I'm going to find some way to get this red up here. So there's a lot of ways to get that red up here. Here's the one I'm going to pick. I'm going to take the red, I'm going to move it underneath, okay? And then I'm going to move this down. And now once I've moved that down fully, I'll be able to slide this into position, okay? And that gets slid. The other way to look at that actually is I want to move this up and I'm sliding these out of the way so I can move it up. It's sort of like visually whatever's easier for you. But I think to be more consistent, I'll describe it this way. That I'm moving this forward and I slide this piece in. And I put that back. Okay. okay. Now the move is done. I, all I'm doing now is a transcriber. I'm just literally reversing out whatever I did. I take this other piece that's bugging me and I move it into that same position. And I just reverse that whole move. Okay, so I undo that portion, now I move it off to the side, and this will come down and grab it. So this will come down, the piece will slide in, and it comes back up. And that's that. Make sense? All right. Yeah. Okay. Now, um, let's do that one more time. Okay, we're going to do it one more time. We're going to just flip this piece, we're going to move it towards you, off to the side, and back up. It goes underneath, this comes down, gets slid in and up. This one takes its position, its place. And now I reverse that whole move, and that's that, okay? Now again, instead of flipping these two, I could flip these two if I wanted to flip these two. One of the moves I love to do is I love to flip these two that are opposite on the puzzle. So sometimes I'll give people the cube which all solved except that the corners are flipped. Mm -hmm. And it's a great little thing because I give them a little, so let me just show it to you actually, and then I'll tell you what I talk about. So I'm going to move the two pieces so that they're on the same side. Now I'm going to flip this one. Okay, move the other one into position, and I reverse that move. Okay, then I reverse that, and I bring this back down. And what I love about this position is that you have no sides. So I'll give it to a little kid, and I'll be like, what's the matter? You haven't solved anything. You don't even have one side. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and they look at it, and they're like, well, I just want to turn that yeah. one piece around. And I'll say, I'll give you a hint. And I let them struggle for me, and I'm like, they're like, okay, what's the hint? I'm like, you have to flip one clockwise and the other counterclockwise. Mm. And they look at me like, yeah, that doesn't really help. <laughs> and I'm like, I know. <laughs> it's true, and it is helpful, but without the other half of the explanation, you're not going to get it. So anyway, so that's, this is when you're uh, doing this many years and you get bored, that's the kind of stuff you do. Okay. <laughs> okay. Right. All right, let me just put this back together. Okay. All right, so back here. Okay. Now we've learned how to, how to flip all the pieces, but actually flipping at you comes at the end. I like it. It's easier to show. But, um, but before you flip things you, using this solution, you actually have to move them into position first. So we've sort of avoided that, assumed everything was in a position. Now we're going to get to the other two p moves, which are moving the pieces around. Okay? Let me show you this move. I love this move. Okay? Here we go. The minimum flip is two pieces, but the minimum move is three. You can't move less than three pieces on the puzzle. You can't just switch two pieces. That's just one of these laws of the cube. Okay? So, um, um, 
Um, I've added, in addition to the two pieces that I've been working with, which are these two opposite pieces, mm -hmm. I've added a third one, which was which is down oh. here. Okay, and I've added the third one down here. Actually, you didn't notice it, but this third one was always sort of involved anyway. Okay, it's just that it, 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 it never really, it kind of moved and moved itself back. It wasn't ever a problem. See, when I take this piece, I remember I said, I think all the moves are going to start the same, right? I'm going to take the pieces that are bugging me mm -hmm. and move them towards you. And I'm going to move the one that's, you know, okay, this, either the edge or the corner, or the one that's bothering me the most, I'm going to move it off to the side. But when I move it off to the side, this other piece takes its place. See, it's not just creating a vacuum. When I take this piece and I move it off to the side, this other piece takes its place. And where did that other piece come from? It came from down here. So actually, if you think about it, this piece was always involved. Okay, mm -hmm. I just moved this towards you and this piece took its place, okay? Um, but right now, hold that thought a second. I just want you to follow this move. So this side is red, right? And this piece is red and yellow. And that means this piece does not belong here. The fact that this red lines up is sort of a coincidence, but actually, if you think of it in terms of pieces, this is the red and yellow piece. It doesn't belong here, it belongs here instead, okay? Because I can't do anything with the piece here, I'm going to perform my initial move just like I always do. I'm going to move the piece off to the side. Okay, so let's just do that. Do not worry about the other two. Just keep your eye on the red and yellow piece. So I'm going to perform the move that we performed many times before, and that's going to take this piece from here and it's going to move it to the front to your to your front left side. Okay, so the move is just going to go boom like that. So we'll move it towards you, move the piece off, and move these back. See, I just took the piece and I moved it there. Now, if I that's the whole move. So this move is shorter than the other one. That's the whole thing. There is no extra piece to get it to orient. It's, it's it. We're done with the first half of the move. Okay? Now, what did the move accomplish? It simply took the red and yellow piece, I'm sorry, the red and yellow piece and moved it off to the side, right? Mm -hmm. Now, we're going to reverse that. Just like we've been reversing, we've created all this other damage, all these pieces are scrambled. We're going to reverse that so we can fix everything, right? But when we reverse it, what's going to happen? This red and yellow piece is going to come back up here. And we don't want it to come and join the red and the white. Right? We want it to come and join the red and the yellow. So we simply turn the red and the yellow so they're waiting for it when it returns. Does that make sense? Okay. Yeah. So now when we perform the move in reverse, okay, boom. You can see that piece now lined up. And in fact, all the pieces lined up. Okay. And we're going to follow this through a couple of times so we can see why the other pieces also lined up. Okay. <clears throat> when this piece moves off, so basically here's the move. This piece moves off to the side and it comes back into that slot. But when this piece moves off to the side, this piece on the bottom comes up and takes its spot. Now, what color is that? Red. And? White. And that happens, happens to be the piece that goes there anyway, right? So when this piece gets, gets ejected, this other red and white comes up and takes its place. And then it's home. It's done, right? Yeah. But actually, when we perform the move in reverse, something has to move back down. If the move going forward move the piece from the bottom to the top, then that means the move in reverse is going to move something from the top and have it go to the bottom. But we don't want to have it be the red and white, because red and white is going to be done, it's going to be home, right? But actually, this other piece is going to be in its place, the one when, when we move the red and yellow so they're waiting for it, it's also going to move the orange and white here. Mm -hmm. And so when the move gets reversed, this piece will go down and take its place. You see, this goes up, let's do it, let's do it this way. See, this piece goes up, and that one comes down in its spot. Make sense? This goes up, that comes down in its place. This gets pushed off to the side, and then comes back into that slot. Make sense? This piece goes up, and then is moved off to the side, does not evolve in the second half, and then it just comes back. Does that make sense? That's how all three rotate. So let's do that again. This piece comes up, okay? And then this piece is gonna go down in its place, okay? And thus all three pieces move, okay? Now, we're gonna do the coolest thing. Okay. Actually, let me do the move one more time. I think I think I'm gonna do it in a way that makes it really visually good. Okay. Okay. So let's just follow the logic again. This goes off to the side and comes back up here. This comes up, and that's gonna go down in its spot. Okay, we're gonna do the move again. Okay? Now, instead of doing these three pieces, we're going to do these three pieces. The, the three edges, we're going to do the three corners. The move's exactly the same otherwise, okay? So watch. That's why this solution is so cool, because it's so symmetrical. Instead of these three, we're going to move these three, okay? This piece will move off to the side, and then come back into that slot. This piece will come up, that piece will go down in the spot. 
So other than it being these three, it's these three. But it, other than that, it's the exact same move. So let's do it. So this piece is going to get moved off to the side. Then I swap the slots, and then it's going to come back into that spot. Make sense? Mm. Okay. okay, do it one more time. Okay. This piece is going to come off, up. And then this piece will come here and come down in its spot. Okay, so this piece will come up. Okay, and then this gets put here, and this will go down in its place. Make sense? So instead of these three, it's these three. Okay? But actually, just like before, I, if I wanted to involve a different three, I can pick any three on the puzzle that I want. So I can pick, the, I can pick these three, for example. So let's do it. Okay? Move the piece into this position. Now I'm going to pick this one instead. And now I reverse myself. Okay? And now these three have moved. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so now I have moved one, two, three. Okay, uh, these three have moved. <clears throat> and actually, I start, I'm going to start to do some variations on that theme just to show you the beginning power that you have to move any three that you want on the whole puzzle. So, for example, instead of moving the piece, when I move this piece this way, right, I'm essentially involving this piece because I'm pulling this piece into that slot. But if I move the pieces in the opposite direction, right, Mm -hmm. Then actually, instead of involving this piece in the, in the equation, in, in my empty slot, I'm putting this piece from the side into my slot. Okay? And now that's the piece that's going to be affected. Now I'm going to slightly pick a different one here. And I reverse my move. And voila. Okay? Can you see? I've now affected that one, that one, and that one. Mm -hmm. It's really any three that I want. It's any three that I want. Okay, that's it. You have to string all those moves together, but now you have the ability to move the edges, move the corners, flip the edges, flip the corners, all with the same basic move, right? And it's totally logical, right? Because mm -hmm. it has to work, right? Because yeah. going forward, there's one last little thing, just one tiny little thing that I've glossed over, one tiny little complexity, okay? I'm just going to show you one other pattern that seems impossible based on what I just said. Okay, let's look at this one exception pattern. Okay, this pattern here, let's take a look at this pattern. Can you, th what I've done here is I've actually swapped these two. So these pieces, two p edges need to switch. These two edges need to switch, okay? Mm -hmm. And these two corners need to switch, okay? These mm -hmm. two corners need to switch. So remember I said the minimum, you couldn't just switch two pieces, okay? The minimum move was three. Mm -hmm. But we always kept our count of how many pieces were being moved. We would count them within one type, so either edges or corners. This solution actually keeps with the rule, which is we haven't moved less than two pieces. We've moved four pieces. But it's two edges, two corners. Mm -hmm. It's two edges, two corners. None of the moves that we've developed so far can solve this. None of them. Okay. Here's the difference. Every move that I've shown you so far is completely symmetrical, right? Mm -hmm. And therefore, since it has a forward component and a reverse component, every single move I've shown you is an even number of moves. Mm -hmm. Make sense? Right? Because they're all symmetrical. This is an odd number of moves away. So you could, using just the logic that I showed you, solve this because it's an odd number of moves away. All those moves so far are even. But the solution is very simple. I just have to make one turn. And now I'm back on the even system. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So in other words, even though it might look like, oh, these are good and these are good, so I want to keep these four into position, the truth is I can't hold that and maintain the rest of the, that method. So instead, what I have to do is I'm just going to make one single turn. Actually, I'll do it this way. I'll make this one turn, and I'll just cut this one corner into position, and all the others look scrambled, which makes it look like I'm less mm -hmm. I'm farther away than where I wanted to be. But actually, from here, I could simply do, you know, boom, 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 you know, three cycles, and I would be done. Okay? So let's do that. So I'm going to swap these three. I'll go boom, boom, boom. Okay, yeah, I'm oh, sorry, that was a little confusing. If you rewind, you'll see what I did. Okay, but I just moved three pieces, now I have to reorient these pieces, okay? So I'm gonna reorient these pieces. The way we reoriented, looking at just the green now, instead of reorienting, because the other move I showed you had the green come up to the top, mm -hmm. but actually, have, uh, um, now, the green are in, now, the, now, the, now the green are in the front. So I just have to do this move starting from the reverse. Or I could start from this position, 
and then flip this one clockwise, counterclockwise, and then that one counterclockwise. Either way is valid. I hope that made sense. I might have gone, gone a little fast on that. But top comes off to the side, round to the bottom, and that's the same move I saw before. Now I take this one and I reverse the move. And now all the green are up. Okay? Etc. I'm just going to continue. I'm not going to show you the rest. But basically, I'm just inching my way forward, piece by piece, moving the pieces into position. When I see a randomly scrambled cube, okay, one way to solve it, I mean, I use sort of my regular method, but another way to solve it is when you, especially if you get stuck at the end, is to use these moves that just move a couple of pieces around. Mm -hmm. And I can target and say, I want to move this piece there, this piece there, and this piece there. And that's the way I can match the cubes up pretty quickly. Make sense? Yeah. yeah. That's it. I've been meaning to film this for so long. I'm finally, finally glad, I'm glad I finally got to, uh, to explain it. I hope that it made sense. I think it's the most logical way to understand the cube. Uh, I explain it to kids all the time, and uh, most of them seem to get it. I don't know. It's obviously not the fastest method in the world, um, but, it, uh, uh, but hopefully it's the one that uh, does the best at dispelling any sort of confusion about how could this possibly work. Make sense? Yeah, awesome. Is that helpful? Yeah. Great, sweet. Awesome. Thank you so much. Yes. I appreciate it.